morning, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for joining us today. As I come to the screen, I was reminded for some reason of an Ulpan class that I took many years ago in Israel. And when we would start the class, the teacher would say, Kulam Po, which means, is everybody here? Kulam Po. And sort of a funny saying because everyone who's there is there, right? And uh, someone. <laughs> Uh, couldn't say not here. Well, <laughs> this morning that everybody uh, is here uh, who is seeking to be here. And I trust this morning that this is a good place for us to be. Sort of chilly this morning, but I don't know about you, but I felt a uh, spring in the air today as we come closer to Pesach and we're marking that with a special Shabbat today, Shabbat para, a passage about uh, reminding us of the red heifer, uh, which is a part of that cleansing prior to Passover and tells us that Shabbat Hagadol is coming, the great Shabbat, next Shabbat before Pesach, and then of course followed by Passover. And we have some added uh, joy this morning as we're moving in this same time frame toward a uh, re-entry into in-person services at a limited uh, capacity, of course, and with some, uh, some limitations, but we really are coming close at this point, and we look forward to that. But this morning, let's use this time that we have uh, together in this medium uh, that we have to enter into God's uh, gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Avinu Shabashamain, our King, our Father. We bless your holy name this morning. Thank you for this Shabbat. Thank you this morning for the opportunity and for the capacity to bless your holy name. Lord, we pray this morning that for each one of us, we would experience that rest that you grant us, that you call us to on this day. We pray this morning that we would experience that foretaste of Malchut HaShamayim, of Yom Shekulo Shabbat, the kingdom of heaven, that day that is all Shabbat uh, in its fullness, O oh God. We pray that you would exalt your son, our Messiah, Yeshua, and our King among us. We pray, Lord, that your Ruach HaKodesh, your spirit, would work within and among us as individuals and as a community today. Draw us, Lord, before your very presence. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Join me this morning in a song for Shabbat. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, Almost High. Mizmoshil Yom HaShabbat Tov lehodot la Adonai Uzamel Shimcha El Yom Uzamel Shimcha El Yom Mizmor Shil Yom HaShabbat Tov lehodot la Adonai Uzamel Shimcha El Yom Uzamel Shimcha El Yom Lehagid Baboker Hastecha Leemunat Kahanilot Aleyasor Baalei Nevel Aleyasor Shabbat, 
אהיון, מזמור שיר ליום השבת, טוב להודות לאדוני, ולזמר לשמך אהיון, ולזמר לשמך אהיון. עושה שלום, שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה, יעשה שלום. עושה שלום, שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה, יעשה שלום. הוא יעשה שלום, שלום עלינו, ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום, שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה, יעשה שלום. עושה שלום, שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה, יעשה שלום. הוא יעשה שלום. שלום עלינו, ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום, שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה. Amen. If you would like to follow along with us and you're not sure how to do that, just click on the chat and you'll see there a link to our Isidur and you'll have every word and every part of our service this morning. You can just go ahead and pull that up on your computer and follow along in Hebrew, uh, transliteration, the English translation. as we continue to bless and to praise the living God moving from this time of exaltation through the, the Psalms and thanksgiving and praise into a time of now uh, receiving upon ourselves God's sovereignty and God's kingdom in a deeply personal way in this section in which we declare the words of the Shema. Please follow along on page two of our Isidore, or if you're following along in the black beauty of Sidor, um, it's pages 74 to 85. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, יוצרו ובורי חושך, עושי שלום ובורי את הכל. עושה שלום ובורא את החול, ילהל היי, יאי, 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 together Shama Israel Adonai Elohim 
Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kevod, Malchut Tzav, Le'olam Va'ed. Please read along in English with me the words of the Ve'a Hafta. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. <clears throat> Avol hasat fila be'ad ha'mi Libi kamayim makervi Asa kol nila el ha'hayrovi Bafi tfila l'rachami of all the sad fila, they are me. Me be kamayim, back hair be. A sakoli la el, a higher roe. The feet fila, the rahabim. Rahami Mavakesh Rahami Mavakesh Naman Shimcha Naman Shimcha Rahami Mavakesh Of all the sad fila they are me. Me be kamayim bekebi. Asa koli la el ha hayrovi. Befit fila la rachamim. Rachamim avakesh. Rachamim of a cash. The man shimcha, the man shimcha. Rachamim of a cash. The man shimcha, the man shimcha. Shabbat Shalom. Please join me in rising for the Amidah. Um, in this week's Parsha, we have a very dramatic scene of Moshe uh, ascending Mount Sinai and having an encounter with God. And in that same way, as we go through our service, uh, we start with the morning blessings and uh, starting our day acknowledging God's presence. We sing psalms of praise. Uh, we, we begin to have that encounter with God as we move up to the Shema and acknowledging God's kingship. And then we come to the Amidah where we speak to God and spend time in God's presence. And then we move to the Torah service where God speaks back to us through the words of Torah. And as, as Moshe has this encounter with God after the sin of Israel of the golden calf, he says, uh, how will we be known if, if, you, if your presence does not go with us, how will we be, be distinguished from any other people upon the face of the earth? 
So this is really a moment in our service to, to have that encounter with God's presence. So please join me on page three of the Isidur as we pray the Amidah. Adonai roi lo echzor Linot Deshe yabiteni Adonai roi lo echzor Al me menuchot Yenahaleni nafshi Yeshovet Yan Heni Vamagilit Yan Heni Vamagilit Sedek Leman Shemo Nafshi Shove Yan Heni Vamagilit Sedek Yan Heni Vamagilit Sedek Leman Shemo Adonai roi lo echzor Binot Deshe yarbitzeni Adonai roi lo echzor Ame menuchot Yenahaleni nafshi Yeshove Yancheni v'magele tzedek Yancheni v'magele tzedek L'man shemo L'man shemo Gam ki elet begeit l'amavet Lo yirara ki atta imadi Shivtecha umishantecha, hema yanachamuni. Ta'arok lefanai, shulchan neget zorerai, 
Shanta Mashem and Roshi Kosi Revaya Kosi Revaya Gam ki alef begeit alama vet lo yirara ki ata imadi shivtecha umi shantecha hema yenachamuni ta'aroch lefanai shulchan neged zorerai zatach shanta v'shem en roshi kosi. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads us paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear evil. You are with me, your rod and your staff comfort me. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, thank you for these assuring promises, words. Lord, thank you for your accompaniment. Thank you for your sovereignty. Thank you for your promise, Lord, of eternal accompaniment in you. Lord, we pray this morning for those in our community and those uh, in our families and in other um, venues of our lives who are in need of healing today. I'd like to invite you to place in the chat the names of people for whom we're praying, first names, uh, Hebrew names, um, but maybe refrain from last names for privacy. I do want to uh, mention this morning a special prayer request for Susan Wilms, who's in the hospital, been in the hospital for a few days, and uh, not quite sure what's going on. It's not COVID, it's, it's not the flu, and, uh, and running some tests and things, but uh, she's, she's not well right now, and so we just uh, wanna pray for her and mention her specifically. Just had a visit from Al this morning here at the synagogue on the way to be with Susan this morning. And so, Father, we do pray that you who have blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, that you would bless uh, Susan, that you would bless and that you would heal everyone whose name is coming before you in our chat this morning. Father, we pray that you would do your work in their lives. We pray that you would reach down from your abode and bring a refuash lema umehera, a complete and a speedy healing, Lord, refuata nefesh, refuata guf, Lord, a healing of uh, soul, Lord, spirit, uh, a healing of uh, the, the physical body, Father. We pray in the name of Yeshua that uh, you might uh, you might act and that you might draw each one, Lord, closer to you, that you might bring peace, Lord, that you might end uh, pain, Father, that you might um, bring restoration from the, the, the root source, Lord, of the problem, 
that you might uh, work through um, those who are in the lives of the people for whom we're praying uh, to be conduits of your healing, O oh God. We put our trust not in one particular outcome as we see it, Lord, but we put our trust and our hope in you as sovereign and powerful and loving and merciful. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Well, I was, uh, as I was thinking and, and singing this morning, I started to get really excited about phasing back into our in-person services. I've been excited about it, uh, but uh, just thinking about it in specific terms uh, was really something special uh, to me this morning. I know I'm often not the most effusive uh, person uh, and demonstrative uh, in, in some ways, but I'll tell you, I just, I'm, I'm so uh, grateful that we are coming to this point. Uh, of course, uh, there are going to be a number of us who are not comfortable and it's not time yet to be uh, coming back to the in-person component and, and that is uh, uh, totally right uh, for you and we're going to continue to be um, offering for the time being now on Zoom and on YouTube. So just as we've been doing, you'll be able to tune in uh, in that way. Um, for those who uh, are uh, feeling that it's time and ready to, to come back. Uh, we hope you'll understand that we'll have uh, limitations and, and we'll be very conscientious uh, with that, especially at the, in the beginning to make sure uh, those who want to uh, come back but are still uh, somewhat apprehensive feel, feel comfortable being in the environment. So with limited capacities and masks and social distancing and those sorts of things. Uh, and, uh, and so we'll... Um, will be uh, moving in that direction. And over the next couple of weeks, uh, you'll see some communications coming out that uh, we'll try to spell out as clearly as possible um, how things are, are gonna work um, as, we move into, uh, as we move into that stage. I was also thinking this morning, as I was uh, kind of scrolling through on gallery view that you know, when, when we do, and for those who will be uh, coming back into in-person services, you know, you can't just uh, have a dark screen with your name in a box with your name covering your face. And uh, although I, I thought at the same time that that might be a good Purim costume for next year, you know, you just put a dark box over your face, write your name there, and you're, you're, a, you're a, a, a Zoomer who hasn't shared your screen. That's who you are for, for Purim. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to a Bezrat Hashem new season. Uh, we will, when we come back in two weeks, again, Be'ezrat Hashem, be reading from the Torah scroll. And you may have noticed uh, behind me uh, some preparation that we've been doing for that. Uh, it's hard to notice because it's such a, such a sleek and thin um, microphone there. But we have mounted a new microphone on the Torah reading table uh, that stretches to you know, get, get much better sound. And also uh, aesthetically, we think it's flexible uh, for the Aliyah and the Torah reader there. And uh, I know that, uh, that it, in some ways it's a, it's a minor thing, but in other ways, uh, lots of investigation and research. And thank you to Michael Hunt, who's, who's just been invaluable on that and mounting it and others giving input. And, and there are other things happening in our sanctuary to prepare uh, to make our return to in-person services um, is very special for, uh, for all of us. So with that, I'd like to invite Andrew Spadafino, our Torah reader this morning, to unmute and say our uh, blessing before reading from the Torah and to read from today's parasha. Andrew? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so the Torah blessing at the bottom of page five on your Isidore. Uh, and then the Torah passage is on the following page there as well. Ba'uch Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher kidshanu b'mitzvotav V'tzivanu la'asok B'divwehe Torah Blessed are you, Adonai our God, ruler of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot and commands us to engage in the study of Torah.
Vayomer Adonai El Moshe Pesolecha Shene Luchot Avanim Kalishonim Vechatavtihi Al Haluchot Et Hahad Valim Asher Hayu Al Haluchot Harishonim Asher Shibarta Veye Nachon Laboker Vaalita va boker el har sinai venitzavta li shaham arosh har veihish loya alehe imach vegam ihish alira beho har gam hatzon vahabakahar ayiru el muol har Ahu Vai Pesohol Sheniluchot Avanihim Kalishonihim Vaishkehem Mosheva Vaboker Vaya Ahal El Hahar Sinai Kasher Tziva Adonai Oto Vai Kahach Beadoho Shenehe luchot avanihim. Vayered Adonai be'anahan. Vayit yatsehev imo sham. Vayikra ha veshehim Adonai. Adonai. No. Vayomer Adonai alpanahai. Vayikra ha. Adonai, Adonai, Eherachum vechanun, Erech apayim berachesed veemet. No seher chesed la alafim, no sehe avon, Vafesha vechata, Venakehe lo yenakehe, Pokehe. Avohon avohot, al banihim ve al benehe vanihim, al shileshihim ve al ribeihim. Vayomer mohoshe, vayikohod arzaha, vayishtehu, vayomer imnaha. Matsati chehin be'enecha Adonai Yelechnaha Adonai Bekirbenu Kihi amkshoref hu Vesalachta La avonenu Uchata tehenu Unchalta nu Amen, Yisher Koach. Thank you so much, Andrew. Beautiful, beautiful reading as always. Parsha Partners, that includes you, no matter how old you are, but um, especially our children, uh, lend an ear. And we turn it over to Seth Wexler for Parsha Partners. Shabbat Shalom, Parsha Partners. Well, we are in the middle of the book of Exodus. We're actually coming closer to the end of it, but we have before us, the Andrew Spadafino Parsha that I always remember because he reads it every year, Kitisa, which means, and you shall take a census. But you should remember this Parsha also as being the one that speaks of this terrible time of the golden calf as well. So I wanna to talk to you about something. And parents, teenagers, children, this is, it has to do with you all, everybody. Have you ever um, received something that, was, that you took no part in and um, it was a good thing, perhaps, and you received it, and it meant a lot. Or, or have you ever took part in something? And I wanted you to think about how that made you feel, which was more impactful, which was more um, transformative, which really kind of made a difference. The one that you just received or something that um, you took part in. I remember that um, I once made for Mother's Day this cross stitch, I think I was in high school, of a little owl. And um, I gave it to my mother for Mother's Day, a little owl. I probably could have bought the thing from um, Michael's, 
maybe for like five dollars but i didn't i made it and i would like to think that had some effect on my mother that i actually made this and it wasn't from michael's well think about these things for you maybe it was a car it was a car given to you and how much more did it mean when you worked for that car or i don't know a trip to disney world and all the different things you can think of that have been given to you in your life well what does this have to do with the parsha well, in the beginning of the Parsha, there were tablets that were given to Moses by God. Moses took nothing, had nothing to do with it. It was given to God, and Moses took these, 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 these tablets, and of course he saw the golden calf, and the tablets were smashed. At the end of the Parsha, we remember also that God says, carve out, Moses, the tablets like the first one. So Moses had something to do with this. And God will write the words that were on the first tablets. So we see the second tablets that were given was like a partnership with God. And they were the ones, they were the everlasting tablets that we re remember that are unbroken. So I want you to think about these things when we, um, when we do things that, um, that God has given to us and we partner with him. It changes us from the inside out and it transforms us. And that's some of the things that this week's Parsha um, speaks about, and some of which we can learn. Shabbat Shalom, Parsha partners. Thank you so much, Seth. I'm amazed that um, what you've just shared is um, syncing so amazingly well with what's on my heart to share this morning too from the parasha. In fact, um, I sort of titled it this morning in the form of a question, what are you making or what are you doing? And your story reminded me of a time when I think I was in sixth grade and I took, I had to take home economics. And to my surprise, I loved home economics. I just, I just thought it was great. I, I learned to use a sewing machine in there. And I remember for Mother's Day sewing uh, pillows in the shape of an M, an O, and an M. And uh, it was totally my own design by that point in the term, you know, it wasn't just following these exact patterns or whatever. And I was so, so, so happy and so proud of that. And uh, I don't know if my parents are watching this morning, but uh, I think that, uh, that my mom might even remember that particular gift. And, you know, when I think back on my children in their early, uh, earliest years and um, as toddlers, I, I remember times when, when they would have a few little toys and they would come to me and they'd say, Dad, I'm making you food. Uh, this is a hamburger. And then they'd hand me the hamburger and I go and hand it back to them and say, that was a delicious hamburger. And Rachel's brother and, uh, and his family were just in town visiting us not too long ago. And they have uh, toddlers that age. And it was the same thing. They would bring me a, 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 a little a building block or something, but it was a slice of pizza and, and they were making it for me. And it was just wonderful. And then as our children grew, it was uh, Lego houses and, and then whole cities and, and with blocks and Legos and they, they build whole communities and, and whole uh, worlds. And as they uh, grew, it was different crafts that they would bring home from, from camps or from school. And, and, and still today, I see in our children this uh, impulse to be creating and to be making things. And for one, it's, it's jewelry. For another, it's, it's uh, knitting projects. For another, it's carpentry uh, projects. And now it's graduated to different power tools and, and more complex things. But I thought to myself as I uh, read this parasha this morning that we are wired to shape the world around us. We really are wi wired to be doing and to be making. And you know, in the heart of our parasha this morning, in chapters 31 and 32 in particular, there is one word that is used time and time again. And I wouldn't, 
honestly have noticed it like I noticed it this year studying the parasha had I not just been reading it through in Hebrew because in English it's translated uh, in different ways appropriately in different contexts but it, but you don't realize it's the same word and it's a very simple word in Hebrew it's the word asa ein sin uh, hey for our Hebrew fans it simply means to do or to make And this word is repeated a number of times. And let me give you a couple of examples of how it's used. First, in, Gen in uh, Exodus chapter 31, we have uh, this man named Betzalel, who is uh, going to be commissioned to be sort of the chief maker or fabricator of the articles and of the uh, Mishkan. And his name, as you'll often find in commentaries, may mean in the shadow of God. B means in. Uh, tzel is shadow. And then El is God. Betzalel, in the shadow of God. As I, as I was reading one commentator this week, Richard Elliott Friedman, when he sees Betzalel, he, he sees an intimation of something of a, a mashup of two words from the creation account. When God creates humanity, it says, created Betzalem Elohim. And maybe Betzalel is a mashup of Betzalem Elohim. And you hear those sounds in that uh, phrase, in the image of God. Betzalel, it says, is filled with the spirit of God, which also harkens back to creation in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. The spirit of God is mentioned. And then, of course, at the creation of humanity, God breathing uh, God, uh, uh, God's breath into uh, humanity. It says about Betzalel in 31, verse 3 and following, that God has given him ability and intelligence with knowledge in all craftsmanship to devise artistic designs to work in gold, silver, and bronze. But literally, the end of that phrase that I just read says that God has given this ability, quote, to think thoughts to make in gold, silver, and bronze. And that's our first instance in 31 and 32, these chapters of this word to make. It was translated to work in what I read earlier in most of our translations. That's fine. But here we have maybe like the first artist. And we have all of these allusions to, to creation of being made in the image of God and, and to the spirit of God. And here's Betzalel as an image bearer and a spirit-filled person now sort of in the ultimate form of imitating God, now fashioning and fabricating just as God created the heavens and the earth. And that's the first use of this word to make, and it's, it's repeated a few times there. But well, we have another type of making something in our Parsha, and that's when we come to chapter uh, 32. And while God is giving Moses this instruction on the mountain to give to Bezalel to, to make the tabernacle, there's sadly and unfortunately something also being made at the base of the mountain. And that's when people, the people say to Aaron, up make us gods who shall go before us. And Aaron's response, take off the rings of gold that are in your ears. And of course, he fashions it with a graving tool. And it says he made a golden calf. And this is, of course, a great uh, sin. I'd like for us to just take note of these two very different items being made into the one on the one hand the call to Betzalel in the tabernacle on the other what's happening at the base of the mountain in the making of the golden calf and to generate the question in our minds what am I doing because this word means to do or to make what am I making through my life. 
am I making a place for God to dwell? Essentially, the call to Bezalel to take the lead and for the community, of course, to build the Mishkan. In our given fields and professions, through our day-to-day -day responsibilities in the home and or in other venues, the reality is we have instructions to follow, we have certifications in our positions, we have guidelines, we have all kinds of different stipulations and protocols and knowledge uh, that is, is applied, of course. At the same time, we have this sense of creativity. We have our attitudes, we have our words, we have our actions. And anything that we're doing in the day-to-day -day can be done in a way that makes a place for God's presence. Betzalel obviously gifted in this particular area, area of fashioning and creating and, 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 and making. When we're filled with God's spirit, when we're walking in God's image, that is conducive to our encountering God and to, through our words and our actions and everything we do, wherever we do it, being a place for people to experience and to encounter God. When we're kind with our words in what we're doing, when we don't retaliate, when we're hopeful and when we're at peace in our daily tasks, and in our environments, wherever that may be, we're building a place for, where God dwells and a place for people to take note of that. But then there's that other thing that can be made. Is there anything that in our lives we are exalting to an idolatrous place? You know, there's nothing wrong with gold. There's nothing wrong with cows. There's nothing wrong with metallurgy. And there's nothing wrong with sculpture. In fact, these are the first thing that Betzalel was called to work with is gold. And that's the, that's, that's the element that's mentioned with respect to the forging of the golden calf. Betzalel is putting these uh, energies and giftings and callings into building a sanctuary for God. But, you know, anger or impatience or losing heart, as we see happening at the base of the mountain, can cause us to do really bad stuff with the things. We, ha we have the, the giftings that we could be using to bring God's presence. Don't tear down, don't exalt your particular, we're thinking now as we come into a new stage of entering back into uh, the sanctuary and, and the different thoughts and, and, and feelings and, and views on that, which are natural and which every community uh, is going to experience, but let's not exalt our particular COVID-19 view, whichever, wherever it may be, to this sacrosanct place as we're seeing happening here in the parasha. The question for each one of us this morning is, is what are you making? And what is your purpose in what you're doing? Is it to bring God's presence closer to people here? Or are we just exalting that which can never compare to God? Some passages in the Brit Hadasha. that speak to this idea and, and speak to this question of what are we making. Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 to 24, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for people, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord, Messiah. Yaakov, James chapter 1, verse 22, he writes, Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. 
Ephesians chapter 5, 15 to 16. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10, Shaul writes, according to the grace of God given to me like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one care how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Messiah Yeshua. There are a few other uses of this word to make in Hebrew in our parasha and in these two chapters in particular, but I close with this one, and it's in chapter 32, verse 16, where we see that God has been making something as well, and it's that same word, asa, used, that God has been making this new set, God makes this new set of tablets that Moses will then uh, God makes this set of tablets that Moses will bring uh, down the mountain. And that means we have in these tablets the means to know God's character. That means we, we have instructions that show us who God is and how to be holy like God is holy. May through each one of our lives, we be making a place for God's very presence for all to encounter. Avinu Shabbat Lord, this morning, we bless and we praise and we glorify uh, you in all of your creative power and might on this Shabbat and every Shabbat. We remember, Lord, you made the heavens and the earth in six days and on the seventh day you rested. Lord, we see so clearly in our parasha this morning that you endow humanity, Father, people with various and beautiful uh, giftings and callings, and you empower uh, by your spirit. Lord, I pray for each one of us this morning who uh, walk before you here in our congregation, Lord, in our community, um, who seek to be individuals who put to use all that we have been given, Lord, um, to promote who you are and, and your presence and just bringing your presence more and more and more uh, into this realm, Father, building tabernacles, so to speak, as we uh, go about our lives and our endeavors. Lord, I pray that if there is anything that we're exalting to a place that it should not occupy, especially as we're looking forward to Pesach, Lord, and beginning in just a few weeks, that you would show us that, convict us of that, Lord, and cause us to turn from those things. Lord, may the words of our mouths, Lord, may the, the works of our hands all be for um, promoting and all be for publicizing the fact that you are God, Lord, that your present, that your presence uh, fills all of the earth and is available, Lord, for all. We pray these things in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. There is none like our God. Ein kelo heinu, ein kadoneinu, ein kemal keinu, ein kemoshienu, mi kelo heinu, mi kadoneinu, mi kemal keinu, mi kemoshienu. No de lelo heinu, no de la donenu, no de la malkeinu, no de la moshienu, baruch heinu, baruch adonenu, 
Baruch Malkeinu, Baruch Moshienu, Atahu Adonai Eloheinu, Atahu Adonai Atahu Malkeinu, Atahu Moshienu, Atahu Shechitiru, Avohotenu, Lefanecha et Ketoret. And if you are in mourning or remembering the anniversary of the loss of a loved one, uh, we can look forward one day soon to be together in a minion uh, to uh, recite together the Mourner's Kaddish. But until that day, we offer this prayer. Master of the world, God of the spirit of all flesh, it is revealed and known before you that it is my fervent desire to praise your name and to remember and honor my beloved by reciting the mourner's Kaddish in a company of a minion. Though circumstances prevent me from doing so, may my yearning and prayers find favor in your eyes and be accepted and received before you as if I had prayed that Kaddish. May you grant hope and healing to all who suffer and may we soon be able to once again gather safely in holiness and joy. May your name, Adonai, be elevated and sanctified everywhere on earth. And may peace reign everywhere. Oh, say shalom bim romah. Uya say shalom aleinu. Ve'al kol Yisrael ve'al kol Yoshvetevel. Vimaru, Vimaru, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Barb. We're going to go to Heather Kasdan now for a special announcement for a sisterhood event. Perfect. Well, greetings from outside. I This is like the benefit of being on Zoom is just being outdoors during our services. Um, but tonight is something really special and beautiful. We are going to be joined uh, with, our sis with our sisterhood uh, from Giselle Bruce, formerly known as Giselle Leo Pepe. She has performed at the Asheville Music Festival. She has been um, a special guest at a past sisterhood retreat. And so it's really just welcoming a family member back. So the Zoom link is in your email and we'll be doing Havdalah and worship together at 7 p.m. tonight. I'll see you there. Thank you, Heather. And uh, for some community highlights, Share my screen here, and of course, uh, this is what Heather was referring to uh, tonight, and you can go to that email and to our website also, uh, but tonight, uh, March 6th at 7 p.m., uh, our friend and previous retreat speaker, Giselle Bruce, will be leading uh, a concert for the Sisterhood Retreat. Also, as a reminder, at 7 p.m. on Monday, we continue with our Matthew class. In fact, this is our last one, Chapter 28. Uh, and we'll be uh, finishing up with the wonderful news of the risen Messiah. And just as a heads up, the following Monday night, we'll begin a new study on uh, the uh, whoever's letter, we don't know, <laughs> to the Messianic Jews, commonly known as uh, the letter to the Hebrews. And so you can look for that. And if you're interested in being on the email list, uh, to receive information for uh, for joining our Zoom, you can contact me at mike at intershalom.org. Also on uh, Tuesday night at 7 p.m., continue with Hebrew 1 class. And then finally, you can come to our website. As always, learn about us. Visitors can visit uh, the events that we've talked about will be listed. You can listen and actually view our previous uh, messages, uh, the one from Seth today. You can give to our congregation and to the service of the Lord, and you can contact us with prayer requests or any other thing that you'd like to discuss with us. So with that, I say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. 
Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Y'all